Good morning, everybody. Welcome to The Game Plan. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at VerifiedInvesting.com. Now, a couple things we have to go over today. We got some key economic news later in the week. Earnings start in earnest, so meaning technology stocks like Netflix as well as IBM and Tesla report later this week. We got to get right into the charts, though, because there is a lot to discuss. So let's go over some of the key news headlines here, right? So right off the bat, semis are racing out of the gate again. This has become a normal thing. Almost every single day over the last week or two, the SMH, the semiconductors, NVIDIA, AMD, you name it, they are racing higher. There's an over-allocation beginning to go, massive greed coming into the space. I'm going to show you a really interesting chart in just a couple minutes that's going to kind of really put it into perspective how insane this is getting. All right, but again, we are still looking at that SMH. Remember on Friday, I talked about the max move on, on SMH, the semiconductor ETF, right around 194 to 195. That's where I'm looking at this point. We actually had a monster move on Friday after I went and talked about that. Now we're getting very close. Now trading basically at 189 on the SMH. Okay, greedflation. I want to talk to you a little bit about greedflation. So what greedflation is, and greedflation caused more than half of the inflation last year as company profits remained at all-time highs. Now, again, greedflation is still inflation. It doesn't matter. But my point is this, is that we saw company profits make new all-time highs or at least stay at all-time highs during this entire period of inflation that we've been through in the U.S., really in the world. Now, the reason why it's called greedflation is that, in general, what that's telling you is that these companies pushed all the price increases. They didn't, they didn't take any of those price increases themselves. They pushed it all onto you as a consumer, and you guys, me included, we are the ones that shouldered the burden for that inflation. Now, the only reason that works is because the market is being flooded with liquidity. And even though the Fed has tightened, the U.S. government has spent more and more money. We know the U.S. national debt, 34 plus trillion and rising continually. And that's the only way they've gotten away from it, guys. The only way. And remember, credit card debt, new all-time highs, $1.1 trillion. We just continue to spike. So the U.S. consumer is hurting. But there's enough liquidity in the market, enough loans, enough credit card allowances to allow them to continue to spend. At some point, that breaks, and that's where the basically the house of cards starts tumbling down. Next up, we have J.P. Morgan analyst says that market is overbought. It needs better earnings to keep climbing, climbing, but it warns, the analyst warns, that that's not likely to happen. So what this analyst is saying, guys, to break it down is that you have – the stock market at such crazy levels that even good earnings are probably not going to ca be the catalyst for further upside. We'll have to watch and see what those earnings come out, but we are er entering earnings season. Okay, a couple other things here, guys, as I scroll through. Some of the big headlines for me here, we have natural gas continues to collapse as the country begins to, to kind of, basically we see the country starting to warm up, right? We went through this big deep freeze just this last weekend, even here in Florida, it almost got to freezing. And again, now we're starting to move out of that. That's pushing natural gas down. I'll reveal my latest entry on natural gas just in a little bit. All right, China. China's stock market continues to collapse. The country begins to do outreach to businesses in Davos and beyond. So one of the big highlights from Davos recently where all these big heads of state and leaders were talking and business leaders was that there was a huge delegation of the Chinese. They're trying to get businesses to come back to China to stimulate their economy. Now, for me, I take note of that. I take note of how nasty the stock market's gotten there. Is there an opportunity? Is the tide eventually going to turn into something that I can make money as a swing trader on. All right, again, key symbols there, FXI, KWeb, those are the two ETFs I follow. Baba and Baidu, some of the biggest names. Tencent would be another one. 76, 76 S&P companies report earnings this week. Big names include Netflix, IBM, American uh, United Airlines, 3M, GE, Texas Instruments, Tesla, Intel, Visa, and a lot more. So big amounts of companies reporting this week. Then next week, we'll get Amazon and Apple and a bunch of these other ones. It is going to get crazy in the markets. All right. 
As promised, I said I would show you guys a chart that really shows you something. This is cur courtesy of Tavi Costa. Um, shout out to him for posting this chart. I found it impressively insightful. Now, one of the things you have to see, guys, so this is the divergence. So how many times have we heard people say, oh, the, the whole market is rallying. This is a broad-based rally. The answer is that's BS. It just is. And you can see it in this chart. Literally, these are all the sectors of the market. All these are them, right? So look at all of this. This is every other sector in the market. And this is technology up here. Look at this. Look at the divergence. So while the S&P made a new high on Friday, out of all 12, all right, out of all of this, all of the total sectors, only one of them made a new all-time high. But it was a big enough one, the technology sector, to power the S&P to a new all-time high. Look at that. That shows you in a graph how crazy it is. This is the whole rest of the market, which, by the way, since COVID, look at this. Since COVID, this is the whole rest of the market, basically. You know, it's had some ups and downs, sure. But look at technology. Holy cow, that is impressively insane. And it's a warning sign. These are the same things we saw. If you map out the market going back to 1999 and 2000 with the dot-com era, this was eerily similar, eerily similar to the same sort of thing that was going on. So just keep that in the back of your mind, guys. You have to be aware of the reality. And by the way, it doesn't mean that, and think about this, there, there are multiple things that could happen here. You could have tech pull back and these move and meet somewhere in the middle. The jaws could close. You could have tech go sideways. These could come up. Or you could have tech fall more. The rest of the market fall less. Ultimately, what's going to eventually have to happen is that technology will have to come back in and meet this other group you know, at some point in the future, whether it's in a big collapse or the two of them kind of figure out somewhere in the middle to meet. So again, just something to pay attention to that. Next up, let's quickly go to our Fed watch tool. I wanted to show this. I showed this on Friday. On Friday, these two boxes here were both blue, meaning that the market was split between whether or not the Federal Reserve would be cutting in March or in May. What do we see here today? Brand new day. It's no longer anticipated based on this that the, the Fed will be cutting in March. So what we see now is that the anticipation, the highest probability on the Fed watch tool is now that they will not be cutting in March, but instead the first cut will come in May. All right, that's May 1st. So I thought that was interesting because, again, it shows us that the Fed's, the Federal Reserve, which has strictly been saying, you know, what, two, three cuts this year, and the market's been saying, no, we say six cuts, we say whatever amount of cuts. The market is starting as we go through this year to say, wait a minute, the Fed might be right here. They might be only ready to cut, let's say, three or four times. Now, it's still anticipated, by the way, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's still an anticipation of six cuts. It's just when that first cut is going to come. And right now it's slated for the 1st of May. That's the meeting where the anticipation is. Now, could that change? It may. And I'm going to make sure you stay up to date on it. All right, let's get into some charts here, guys. Let's see what we got here. This is the SPY chart. I wanted to show you this because I was talking with you guys about how the S&P was trading between these, this narrow range, right? This little wedge pattern. And I was saying to you guys, listen, if you break these lows, then you look for a bigger correction. If you break to the upside here, you look for a move on the S&P to 5,000. Well, guess what? Early last week, we tested the low end. We were actually below it for a little bit of an intraday period. And then you know what? The buyers swooped in. The powers that be said, no, not so fast. And now look, on Friday, we closed above that line. So what this does to me is, listen, I mean, we're already at about 4,850. So it's about 150 points on the S&P. It's not that much. But the point is, at this, at this stage, it looks to me to be something where we could be headed up to 5,000, pierce that even number, before you can think about a bigger corrective move. Will that be powered by technology, or will it start to be shaped by other things? We're going to find out. Now, one of the things I want to show you guys is this chart here. 
So I was doing some continued analysis, and I love going kind of outside of the box. Thinking outside of the box has been one of the things that have served me best in trading and investing. It gives me kind of like that little insight that you're not hearing in the financial news media. One of the things I was looking at was when you made the top on Bitcoin, this is the Bitcoin chart here. When you made this top in April and then you pierced it, by what percentage did you pierce the high on Bitcoin? Same thing over here. Here is the chart of natural gas. Natural gas, same pattern. If you put these side by side and you didn't tell me or you didn't tell you guys which chart this was, honestly, I don't know if I could tell you which one was which one without seeing the dollar amounts on the sidelines. High, higher high, right? So what I did was I looked at this and I said, okay, well, let's figure this out. Let's see how much these things pierced because maybe if we, we are now piercing the all-time high on the S&P, does that give us insight on how much the S&P can go up above that key level. So let's do that right now with you guys. I'm gonna get my, my uh, price range here and we're gonna put it right up here at the high on Bitcoin and we're gonna go to that high where it made the high. It was an approximately 6% move higher. So this was 6% right here on natural gas. Let's see what it was. It was approximately 3.5%. So what I was trying to do was I was trying to think, okay, what about percentages? What's risky? Or, you know, basically these are both risky assets. Percentage-wise, they can move incredible amounts in a short amount of time. This, I would say Bitcoin is slightly riskier if you look at when the bull run happened, how much it went up versus these other ones. It's a little bit of a bigger move from the lows than natural gas. So what this is telling me is that when you pierce an M top high, the riskier the asset, the bigger the pierce, which makes sense. It's more risky. It's gonna have more ups during bull markets, more downs during bear markets. So again, the thought being is that, okay, if you have most risky at 6%, at three and a half percent, this is a little less risky, but still pretty risky. What are the, what's the likelihood on a double top pierce? This is the S&P 500. How much could we go up if we did pierce on this high, which we just did on Friday? And based on that calculation, I did a little bit of analysis, and it looks to me to be about 2.75% would generally, maybe 3% would generally be the general target. And interestingly enough, you get really close to the 5,000 level up here based on that same M top pattern piercing. Let's say we go up here, we touch that level, you have that level, and there you have it, all right? So again, my goal here is to just show you things that you're not gonna be seeing anywhere else. I wanna enlighten you, I wanna make you think outside of the box. Anything to help you learn and gain an advantage in the investing realm. And notice how I don't care what asset class it is. It could be any asset class. It's all about looking at the charts because remember, when you see ups and downs here, this has nothing to do with fundamentals, right? That's what that's what the 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 kind of the the base level tells you. What this really is is buyers and sellers deciding based on greed and fear where to push price. This could be a chart of pigs, it could be a chart of cows, it could be wheat, it could be gold, it could be stocks, it could be crypto. Doesn't matter. Greed and fear is what makes it go up, greed and down, fear. That's what it is. It just is. So you can chart anything based on these principles. It's actually very empowering. Okay. So there we have it. So again, generally, I'm still thinking we could probably go up and touch $5,000 or 5,000 on the S&P. You might pierce it by a fraction or so, maybe by a 1% or half a percent. That's always a possibility. But my guess is that's where we are headed in the near term. All right, couple other charts to go over here. Uh, let's just take a look at the NVIDIA chart. NVIDIA pre-market is actually piercing 600 at last, last I checked. In terms of a technical level here, uh, these not much. To be honest, we're in uncharted territory here, and that's just the nature of the beast. But if we look at this chart, and let's look at that now, we bring up this NVIDIA. So this was one trend line, and you can see we've blown right through it, right? So there's that pivot high. There was that previous one. We've gone right through that level. The only other thing that I could potentially think is that you might do a parallel. All right, so again, if we look at a parallel from this line here, what would be a parallel line? And what we can do here is we can do that and then draw that down. And that basically, I'm a little off, but pretty close. That essentially gives us that parallel line right there. And again, I'm trying to match it up. So if we do continue higher, 
you're looking at, let's see where this would be. This would be max move potentially 670 or so. It's hard to know if it'll get there on a straight line, but that would again, to me, be a maximum move based on a parallel line. And bear with me, there's the parallel line on the chart. And again, do you guys see what I did here? I basically am using a parallel technique of pivot low to pivot, 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 pivot right to here, right? And then that would be that parallel line there. That would be your next parallel. Now, there's a couple other things we can look at here, but for the most part, that would be kind of my maximum, maximum move on upside if we were to continue to move higher. Couple other charts to go over here. Um, last Friday, we talked about travelers. Travelers, again, if we look at the chart here, there was a key resistance. I did take a small short position on this on this Pierce. I talked about it in the game plan on Friday. So again, I initiated a small short position on Travelers right up here at these highs. We're right now in the money a little bit on that trade, not by much, but just a little bit. Okay, so these are just a couple little tidbits here, guys. We're gonna take uh, back to center screen here, and we're just gonna take a quick um, 30 seconds to thank Luxalgo. I'm in talks, as I said, with them and creating a couple indicators through Luxalgo that I will use on a daily basis. So let's just take 30 seconds now. Have you considered enhancing your trading experience? We have an amazing tool for you. Luxalgo creates next-gen trading indicators to help the world understand the markets in a smarter way. They have the largest user profile on TradingView and are the only official Discord partner in the technical analysis space. Luxalgo Premium operates seamlessly with top platforms, such as TradingView and Discord, making it the perfect tool for every trader. Take your trading analysis to the next level with Luxalgo. Please visit the description below and sign up for Lux Algo today. All right, guys, back we go here. Here's your Bitcoin chart. Let's do a quick analysis rundown on Bitcoin. Bitcoin has breached that key level that I've talked about here that I think it sends it to 38,000, give or take. So again, notice again, this trend line goes all the way through here. And what we could see here again is it has broken below that. That is to be expected. Remember, I talked about how the hype leads you to these key levels. All right, so where is this headed? Where's your next technical support? If we take a trend line here and we stretch it across here, this is your next support right around 38, give or take. You can see all of the technical levels right here, right here, right here, and right here going right through this flat area that will yield support right down here. So if we do see a flush, 38,000 should be some significant support on Bitcoin. One other thing I just wanted to show you guys on Bitcoin, guys, and again, this is just, I, I really want you guys to be able to learn. So I think this is one of the most important things on Bitcoin. Let's jump to this bigger chart. This is the weekly chart on Bitcoin. Now, the reason why I want to point this out is because there was so much hype coming into the, the spot ETF that people were throwing out crazy numbers like it's going to shoot right to 100,000. Within a year, it'll be 150,000, maybe 220,000. I mean, you could name it. There were, there were crazy targets. But again, it's, it's, it's the difference between people living in fantasy land versus living in reality. And I live in reality where there's charts. And charts will, are basically data points. And data help me stay grounded. It doesn't mean it's going to be right. It's not always right but at least it keeps me grounded from thinking these ludicrous type things. And by the way, do I think eventually one day Bitcoin hits 200,000? Yes, maybe in five years from now, we'll see. But to say it's gonna happen when the data is not clearly pointing to that is asinine, frankly. All right, so what do we know here? Well, let's take a look. So back in 2017, do you guys remember what caused this top? This top right here, the bull market high, that was your futures starting to trade on Bitcoin. Futures top right there, we'll put an F right there. This one, we're gonna put a C here. Why? Because this was the IPO for Coinbase. Think about, remember the hype, IPO for Coinbase, literally right here at the highs. What happened right here in late 2021? The, the ETF, all right, ETF for the futures market, we'll circle the F, that was your high pivot there. So the point is, if you look at pretty much every major high in Bitcoin, it has coincided with a major event that has driven hype to unrealistic levels, and that's where you have a potential top. So again, it's not that I'm going to be right on this, right? It's not to say that we have made a significant top on Bitcoin, but the odds, think about the odds of what I just showed you, right? 
what are the odds that at least this is a multi-month high on Bitcoin right here? And the odds, honestly, when you look back and you look at every major pivot, the odds are, yeah, it could be a top at least for a multi-month. Now, listen, maybe by late this year, we start breaking through it. I'm ultimately a huge long-term bull on Bitcoin, but I'm also a realist. And realists come with data. They come with stuff to back up their statements, not like, oh my goodness, you know, the dollar's going to, you know, how many narratives have we been through? The demise of the dollar, the dollar's going to be worthless. I heard that about 10 times last year alone. Think about it from a chart perspective, because honestly, it serves you better. It keeps you from buying. Think about the amount of, I mean, remember, Bitcoin traded up here. That means people were buying it up there. They were caught up in that narrative. Don't get caught up in narratives, guys. Just look at the charts. Let them guide you. All right. On we go. Let's keep going here through here, guys. I did want to talk about Solana because I did bring up Solana to you guys last Friday. I talked about a major trend line right here on Solana. Look at that trend line. It has now broken, all right? So we have broken this trend line. Now, the level of support, I'm going to go through support and resistance on some of these cryptos because I know you guys have been begging for them, and I really do my best to kind of deliver. But basically, what we're looking for is a move down right here. See this flat top right there? That's your next support level, right around $76, 77, 76, 75, right in that level. So that's my anticipation is you got another 10 bucks down on Solana here in the near term. Let's take a look at INJ here. This is a good one to look at. So if we look at INJ, INJ has been in a channel, okay? And really what we can do here, and I want to just draw my trend lines in, is we can see that it's still in this inside of that channel for now. So again, if we're looking at this, and I'm just drawing these trend lines. You've been in a upper band channel. Okay, there you go. And again, notice that right there. So what you're watching for is does this break basically through and get a daily closing boot move through 33? If you do, believe it or not, I mean, there'll be some minor levels along the way, but you could be headed all the way down to $19. And I know there'll be a lot of people who are not too thrilled with that potential target. I'm just telling you where the major support is. This actually would be where I would be a buyer, right in here. This would be a great, great level to buy. Look at that consolidation right over here. Now listen, maybe it doesn't get there. There'll be a little support right here. There's probably a couple upsloping trend lines, but that would be a major technical level on the INJ chart. Quickly, let's look at Cardano. How about Cardano? See what we got on Cardano here. If we bring up Cardano and we see this, one of the things that I see is Cardano, again, is still holding this little pivot low right here from about a week ago, two weeks ago, right? So we have a little bit of a support level right here. You can see pivot low to pivot low. So right now, 46 to 47 cents is your key level. If that breaks, a buy opportunity for me on this Cardano chart is going to be right in this range at around 39 to 40 cents. Look at all that great support right here, right in this area, across all the way across here. That gives us a good basis for there. Okay, enough crypto. I'll try to go over a couple different charts every single day. Remember oil, guys. Oil broke out of the inverse head and shoulders on Friday. It is still above that line. As long as it remains above that line, you have to be bullish on it. If you get a daily close below that line, Back to, back to neutral, essentially. But right now, you got your inverse head and shoulders, drawing it in again. There it is, and there's your breakout right there. All right, so, so far, so good. It's holding it. I wouldn't call it a blast off. You know, it's not a blast off, but it is what it is. All right, here's your UNG, guys. Look at the drop on UNG today. Uh, again, warm weather, all these things. Spring is coming. Those narratives are starting to take over. That's okay. What we're looking at here is we do have, and by the way, I did add to my UNG. A lot of you guys I've noticed have asked me in the comments, and by the way, I love the comments. Thank you guys so much. The comments are, oh, um, you know, what do you trade when you're trading natural gas? Well, on a short-term basis, I used UNG. Now, I won't hold it as a long-term because it eventually goes to zero. Remember, any ETF that's based off a futures market is eventually going to go near zero. Then they do a reverse stock split. Then it comes back down slowly. Now, you can make money by trading them short-term. The reason they go to zero is because 
the contract rollover, they have to roll over to the next contract. The next contracts, when you have this month and next month and next month, generally there's a little higher price in each month. So when you're holding this contract and you have to buy this next contract, you actually have to pay up. And then over time that contract comes in because it's now the current contract. Then you pay up the next one. So there's a slippage. It's what's called slippage essentially. Just be aware of that. In any case, there is, again, a lot of support coming in around 210 on that gas here, but really amazing. We have gone on natural gas from 315. And by the way, we made money on this trade. I walked you guys through it. We started buying over here, 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 and here, and then we ended up selling a little bit before the, the final move up, but we ended up making money from here up to here. I'm doing the same thing. I added to my UNG this morning, got my average to $5.20. Not a bad average. I'm about 30, 27 cents out of the money. Not a big deal. But the idea here is we're getting close to major support. We should have some sort of check back, I believe, maybe back to 260 or 275 and I'll look to take profits again. I'm a swing trader. I'm not going to hold natural gas. And again, you never hold these ETFs longer term that are based off futures markets. It's a guaranteed loss. Gold, lastly here, guys, real quick on gold. Gold is pulling back just a fraction of a bit. And again, still hovering just below these key levels there. And again, aside from that, I think that really covers it. Um, I will try to go over the Russell uh, tomorrow. I heard a lot of people asking for the Russell. I appreciate that. So I'll go over that, and we'll go over a bunch of other charts as well. All right, back to center screen, guys. My chat, my live trading room chat opens in just a couple minutes, so I got to get going. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. As always, thanks for spending 20, 25 minutes with me every morning. I will do my best to deliver the best I can, the best analysis I can. Take care.